Hi, this is Dr. Betsy Greenleaf, and I'm here with the Body, Mind, Spirit Show. And I'm very excited because we're going to be talking with fitness expert, Dr. Venus Ramos. And you know what? If you're like most of us, you made that New Year's resolution and you're all excited about it for like a day and now it's starting to wear off. So Dr. Venus is going to let us know what we really need to be doing about getting our fitness going. So thank you, Dr. Venus, for being with us. Oh, I am so excited to be here because I have heard that story way too much about these people setting their New Year's resolutions and then it just fizzling out just way too fast. And um, I'm here to stop the fizzle. No more fizzling. <laughs> you know, and I know like now with coronavirus, the things are kind of even harder because in some places gyms are not open or maybe people are scared to go to the gym. I mean, I know prior to coronavirus, when I went to the gym and I told you, I, I got an, I. I'm going to take your advice because I need a little motivation too, but you would see like immediately the week after New Year's, the place would be packed. And then by the end of the month, it'd be dwindling again. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, do you have any tricks for what to do to keep our motivation? Well, it's actually, it's going to be really challenging this year because again, in so many different parts of the country, uh, gyms may not even be open quite yet. Um, and there, people are having to find other ways to keep up their fitness goals. And, and that's the key. Um, when you're talking about your New Year's resolution, what are your goals? That's where you have to start first. What is your goal? And I actually lean on a lot of the, the messages that are out there about goals, smart goals. You probably have heard something about smart goals. That's absolutely true. Um, but I always just like to maybe combine all of those things that you may have heard of, all of those things that you're saying, okay, I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do this. Well, I like to just combine the concepts, but make them as simple as possible. Because when things are simple, then they're a heck of a whole lot easier to maintain and do. So that's the first step is what is your goal? And that is the key, set a SMART goal. And when I'm talking about SMART goals, just in case you haven't heard of them yet, that means that you need to have a goal that is S-M-A-R-T. That is specific, measurable, achievable, re relevant, and time bound. So you need a specific goal, the who, what, where, when, why, specifically, what are you trying to achieve? Then is it a measurable thing? Are you going to be walking for 15 minutes a day? Something that's measurable, um, achievable. Do not choose something crazy like I'm going to climb Mount Everest in a month. <laughs> One month from now, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. If you haven't even done one uh, loop around your block, that's likely not an achievable goal. Um, and then something that is relevant. R is for relevant. It needs to be relevant to your, your life. Um, otherwise, what's the point? Right? <laughs> and then, of course, time bound. You want a goal that you can put uh, a deadline on because then you know you've actually achieved it. When you have a SMART goal, then you actually have something that you can measure and achieve all of those things. And then you're, you're less likely to, to get to what you think might be your goal and say, did I fail? Did I, was I successful? I'm not sure. <laughs> when you have a SMART goal, then you're most likely gonna end up with a positive result. You know, the other thing you, I see is people are like, okay, starting January 1st or 2nd, starting the new year, I'm going to start working out. And then they go like, I'll tell you, I've done it. I've been there. I've done it where I'm like, I haven't worked out in forever. And then I'll go and then I'll work out like I've been doing it for 20 years. I'll do this crazy intense workout. And then I can't walk for a week. <laughs> So, and then that Im immediately says, okay, I don't want to feel like that again. And you're done. No wonder there's a fizzle because you, you cause so much pain to yourself. Create goals that 
are positive things for you that make you feel good. And that's why I say go slow and steady and just instead of the, here's a key. Instead of choosing a goal where so many things can perhaps get in your way and maybe not allow you to achieve it, I mean, you may have the very specific measurable goal of, I want to lose 20 pounds in four months. Eh, that's not a horrible goal. It's, it could be achievable to do that. But a lot of factors can go into that. There is all this the dieting thing, and maybe you didn't choose the right type of diet, and and what what kind of exercise program are you going to do? And maybe that exercise program doesn't actually fit in your lifestyle. There's a whole lot of factors into that. So rather than choosing like a, a weight loss goal uh, at a certain period of time, why not know that your goal is to be healthier? And that could likely mean that you're going to be losing some weight. But in order to achieve that, what are things that I need to do? Make your goal, I'm going to walk for 15 minutes after lunch every day. That is a measurable goal. It's something that's definitely achievable. And in the end, it will probably lead to some, some healthy weight loss. So choose something that is positive, something that's definitely achievable and that you can measure on a regular basis and isn't going to cause you so much grief in your life that you're just going to quit after a week. You know, the other thing is it's so confusing about what exercise to do because, I mean, I remember the, my first introduction when I was younger to exercising, it was all like aerobics, you know, like I grew up in the eighties. So, you know, it was all the leotards and the leg warmers. And then, you know, then there came this time like, oh no, we don't need to do aerobics. We need to be doing weights. And then everyone's like, oh no, you should be doing yoga. So I think it's so confusing. Like, where do we even start? You start where you are. And you start with something that you enjoy, something that you are going to have fun with. Um, if you like moving around and dancing, then fine. Maybe that that jazzercise class is something that you would love or a kickboxing class. Maybe you like that type of a, of, of a power workout. And again, some of you may be needing to do online workouts in order to choose that type of a, a workout. Um, perhaps that type of a group instructor type of format, even if it's being done online, is not really your cup of tea. And you're one of those who, who likes to, to run for a little while um, out in nature. Fine. That's great. It just has to be something that you love because the key is the movement is what's going to get your body feeling good. And when your body's feeling good, it's going to keep wanting more of it. You know, it's funny. I have a friend um, who's a neuro-linguistic expert. So, you know, where they're using language to affect your brain. And I was talking to him one day and he goes, I don't exercise anymore. And I'm like, really? Because he's like fit. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't exercise? He's like, I don't exercise because exercise for some people has this negative connotation in their brain that sets them up for you know, maybe not the best success. He goes, I don't exercise anymore. He goes, I incorporate movement in my day. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the key. I like to choose. I, I love going out and just saying, okay, what am I going to do today? That's going to create more movement. I, I very, very specifically think about this when I'm in the hospital and I'm doing rounds in the hospital. Oh, I have a patient to see on the seventh floor. I could go up the elevator, but you know what? I'm going to go up the stairs. And even if I poop out by the fourth or fifth floor, that's fine. <laughs> I'll take a break and then continue up. Or if I really need to get on the elevator by that point, fine, I'll get on the elevator. But at least I incorporated some movement, extra movement in my day. Just be very intentional about that. Park uh, a couple of rows back instead of parking at the closest possible spot that you can find to your the entrance of your building. Simple things like that to just add a little extra movement into your day, that can do wonders. And even if that is your goal, every day I am going to intentionally think about what I am going to do to add extra movement in my day. That's a great goal to have. 
You know, the other thing I always question is what are the recommend, are there, or first of all, are there recommendations on how much movement <laughs> or exercise that we should be getting a day or a week or, you know, cause you used to hear like, oh, you need to be moving like a half an hour, you know, Three very much there week. there is the still the the standard um if you you talk about the the heart association um you have the 150 minutes of moderate exercise every week and yes it is still there that really hasn't changed but again you can create that as your goal i'm going to get 150 minutes in and you can actually log them each day have i by the end of the week did i get there oh no i have 75 minutes to do today because i didn't get them all in that's fine if you want to do it that way great but again if you're starting from nothing and you know in the past when you've tried to do something like that you really haven't gotten there then start with small little segments, small little bits that you're able to do and build upon that. That's the other thing that I like. Um, uh, BJ Fogg, a scientist out of Stanford, he created the, the behavioral model of tiny habits. And that's just building one tiny little habit at a time until you create the, the behavior that you want. Um, so that's similar to, again, let's go with the walking um, after dinner. Um, what is one thing that you do after dinner every day? And that's perhaps you're, you're loading your dishwasher. Okay, so after the dishwasher, what's the next thing you need to do in order to be able to go for that walk around uh, your neighborhood every day? What's the next thing you would do? Uh, I don't know, maybe put on your shoes so you can go outside. Okay, so after dinner, you load up the dishwasher and that's the one little habit you're going to add on. You're going to put on your tennis shoes and that's it. That's all you're going to do. And then you can take your tennis shoes off and go sit on the couch and, and veg out and watch television like you usually do. That's fine. But about maybe a week or two after that, after it's become a, a, the easiest little habit just to put on your tennis shoes after you load up the, out, out the dishwasher, your next step, you're just going to walk out onto your porch. And that's it. You're not going to go for the walk. You're just going to walk out onto your porch. So you build your tiny little habits one little step at a time until you get there. And again, that is fine because then you are just adding small little bits of movement, small little activities that are eventually going to create that behavior that you're looking for and that positive change that you want. Thank you so much, Dr. Venus. We're going to come back in a minute just after this commercial break. Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made by good people. That's why I love Zona Plus, the world's first software-controlled handheld device that improves cardiovascular health using isometric exercise. You're going to love yours, too. I use mine almost every day to keep my blood pressure right where it should be. It also helps maintain healthy blood and oxygen flow and bone density. And it increases the production of nitric oxide, which also increases blood flow and lowers blood pressure. All good stuff. But what really surprised me is this little device has been adding muscle to my biceps too. I walk around all day long feeling pumped. Check them out at happyliving.com and select Partners in Happy for $50 off. Plus, for every order placed in the month of January, I'll donate $50 to WITV7 and another $50 to Life Vest Inside. And we're back now with Dr. Venus Ramos, exercise celebrity here. So, yeah, I'm so excited to be talking with you because you're really giving us some great tips. And I think I'm maybe finding my motivation to get moving. But um, so you were talking about habits before. You know, I think that's another thing that at least I have struggled with where I've done in my brain, like it's all or none. Mm -hmm. Like I need to be working out like a full you know, bodybuilder workout. And if I can't, then, oh, why bother? So do you it have can any be advice? really difficult to do that. That is a really hard thing to do. I, people 
really look up to athletes in, in, in our society, uh, football players, baseball players, basketball players, we really look up to them, but they're, it's really hard to do the things that they do. So perhaps it's deserved. Um, we can, we don't have to put the whole role model thing on them, but it, the hard work that it takes to be an athlete, that is, that is hard work. But in order to achieve your goals, your health goals, you don't have to make it hard work. And you don't have to put a super tight deadline on it. There's so much, so much pressure in our lives. We don't have to create more pressure. Again, make things simple, make them quick, make them fun, and then you're going to be able to achieve those things. And that's why I love the, the tiny habits concept that I, I chatted about uh, just before the break. Just adding one little step at a time until you get there. Again, we, we stopped off at uh, stepping out on the porch. And then maybe after another two weeks, your next step is going to be, okay, I'm going to now walk out to the sidewalk. It could be that much more of a tiny habit that you're going to create until all of a sudden, now you've started walking for five minutes, then you've started walking for 10 minutes, and you're able to continue to create that habit that lasts. There's this uh, saying, uh, it takes 21 days to create a habit. That's actually not really true. <laughs> there's many different studies. And uh, there's one study that said it, it could take anywhere from 18 days to like 254 days. It really just depends on your habit. So 254 days in one study. <laughs> so you've got a lot of time. Don't feel pressure to feel like I've got to make this my lifestyle right now and I have to stick to it. If you stopped off in this little tiny building on the tiny habits, if you stopped at walking to the sidewalk right outside your home and then uh, you fell out of it for a little while, just get started again. There, there's no deadline. You can keep going, um, but just keep things positive. Just keep moving forward. And if you take a break, tr just try not to step backwards. Just stop and then keep moving. <laughs> That, that I think that's that's the definitely the key, and do don't try to to do these crazy athletic. I'm going to take this diet, and I'm going to I'm going to eat have a cup of this and six ounces of that every single day, and that's the only thing I'm going to eat. And I'm going to do one hour of cardio and another hour of li weightlifting every day, and I'm not going to stray. That's crazy to do from the get-go. <laughs> and I, I was a fitness competitor for, for 20 years. I would have a hard time with that. And you don't have to, you don't have to have that, that competitor mentality. You just need to have a positive mentality to reach your goals. And you know what I've noticed amongst my patients is that the ones that have incorporated movement and exercise in their lives seem to be so much healthier. And we know that you're, you're healthier, but like just seem to be younger, like mentally and physically just young at heart. You know, I might have somebody that comes in at 85 who is deconditioned and they just seem very grumpy where you have the person who's 85, who's gone for a walk every single, you know, or tries to go for a walk. And that person's coming in like bubbly and happy. And there really just seems to be like, where that affecting like mood and just overall like that person. Absolutely. I have it right here. S stay fit, be happy. And it doesn't mean that you have to be super physically fit. Just fit in, in again, body, mind, and spirit. And there's where you find your happiness. It, it's all tied together. So that, yes, I love that. And it is very true, I think. You know, do you ever find any problems with motivation for yourself for uh, exercise? <laughs> absolutely. There is absolutely, especially right now, there is, there's so much going on in my life and in everyone's lives that absolutely motivation can be hard every once in a while, but don't get down on yourself about it. Everyone backtracks a little bit. Everyone has obstacles. Everyone has problems with the motivation. Just remember what your end goal is and think about the fact that 
just because you took a break doesn't mean that you can't keep going, pick up and keep going. So that's fine. So never think that you failed. You just took a break and then you're going to keep going because your body needs a break. Your mind needs a break. Everyone needs a break every once in a while. And the key is do not stress out about it. I'm not going to go into all of the hormonal changes that happen when, you, when you're talking about stress and cortisol, but let's just suffice it to say when your cortisol levels are up too high and they're up too high all the time because you're always stressing about your diet and stressing about your exercise, it pretty much defeats what you're trying to achieve. If you're trying to achieve weight loss, if you're trying to achieve more energy, Cortisol brings that all down in terms of any of the goals you're trying to achieve. So don't stress out about it. Have fun, keep it positive, and you're going to get there. You know, and that's a great point because I've had patients that have come in and they're like, I'm eating what I'm supposed to. I'm on the diet. I'm exercising. Why am I not losing any weight? And it's because you're right. They're they're stressed. Yeah, so... Stress is, is a huge factor when it comes to not being able to achieve your goals. And it, it's really a very, very simple scientific explanation when you just say, okay, stress, cortisol, cortisol high, bad for the body. <laughs> now we do need cortisol. And again, I'm not going to go too much into the science. We need cortisol in our body. It needs to have healthy fluctuations up and down. Um, but when you're too stressed out, it stays chronically high and that's no good for you or your health goals. Do you see like a common complaint amongst your clients and patients when it comes to exercise? Oh, I have all sorts of complaints from, from people. And oftentimes, yes, you have the initial uh, cl- complaints when they first start exercising. Ah, I'm feeling sore. And then, and then it's, okay, first you just have to hang in there for two days because then it's the, the regular uh, two-day DOMS that we talk about, delayed onset muscle soreness. Um, and then it's a little bit of the give your body two weeks to adjust to that increased activity level. So that's the other thing that I have to get people through. And then it's, I just can't fit it in. So here we go again with the, it's too much in the way. So that's where I, I like to think of the building the little stepwise process so that it just feels like it's fitting in seamlessly into your day. And that's when I say, okay, let's start over. Let's start with tiny habits. What can you add on to what you're already doing by that much? That's all we need to do. You know, I'm going to definitely try that because I'm thinking about myself here because I've done that where I'm like, I'm going to wake up in the morning and I set my alarm early to get up to exercise and that alarm goes off and I go, oh, I could sleep a little bit longer. (laughs) And so then I put it off and then I go, oh, I failed. So, and then I just keep making excuses as I go all along. And then, then I go, oh, I'll exercise when everything's done. And I think the point is I'm realizing that there's always something to do and that you really need to put it into your life or put it into a schedule, like maybe mm-hmm. even write it into a schedule. Yeah. So, um, if you're going to get up first thing in the morning and do some exercise, make that your first tiny habit that you're going to do right before you go to bed every night, you're going to set out your shoes and your exercise attire. So it's right there in front of you when you wake up and then you're, then you'll look at it and you go, Oh, it's right there. I guess I should try it, try it on. And if that's what you do, you start with just setting out your, your, your clothes in the morning for the morning before you go to bed and that you, that's all you do for two weeks. I just set the clothes out. They're there. <laughs> then you I wake up that. and you go on with your date. That's fine because that's what you added. You just added that one step. So then the next step is to actually put them on. <laughs> After two weeks of doing that, then you can actually maybe walk out your door with, a, with them on and do five or 10 minutes of something. So again, just small, tiny little steps that you add on a couple weeks at a time. I love that because that's so much more achievable than like, oh, I got to go exercise. So this is definitely something that I'm going to incorporate. Absolutely. And your brain appreciates that. And here's the key. Every time you do it, celebrate. 
So every time you put on your shoes, go, yay for me, and then move on with the rest of your day. Every time you do it, celebrate, and your brain is going to like that. That is wonderful. Where can people find out more information about you? Well, you can go straight to my website. It's really easy, drvenus.com. You have to spell out doctor, D-O-C-T-O-R-V-E-N-U-S. Great. And are you on social media too for people to follow? Oh, absolutely. If you're on Facebook, it's the same thing. Just look up Dr. Venus, D-O-C-T-O-R-V-E-N-U-S. And over on Instagram, it's a little shorter, Doc Venus. Wonderful. So I'd like to thank you again for being on the show today. And I want to remind our viewers that if you are enjoying the programming on WYTV7, that go to our website at WYTV7.org and feel free to donate. Also, you may follow me at my website, which is drbetsygreenleaf.com. And that's a DR and then betsygreenleaf.com. And you can find me also on social media. And once again, I'm so appreciative. I think I am definitely going to be, I, I'm not, I think here we're going to go mindset. I am definitely going to be incorporating what you say. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to record it and put it on my social media so people can call me out when I'm not doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. So you're going to set out your clothes every night before you go to bed. And then you're going to celebrate that you just did that. Then you'll go to bed. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, Dr. Venus. <laughs>